Hello Targ, our friends. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and it's time for another Orc Mode Workout. Today was max effort deadlift day and we got pretty sizable PR. If you guys know the rules, please click like down below. Give me a like. If you watch these, help keep the likes higher than the dislikes. And I'm going to say at this point, guys, anyone who's clicking dislike is just a straight hater who probably needs to get a life. But over to the training, guys. I'm happy with this. I did not plan on doing a normal conventional deadlift today. I woke up, loaded my bar, had to deal with a, a client. I had a client update, and I had the bar loaded with a warm-up weight. Finished with my client, looked at it, trying to figure out what chain weight to use today, and I just realized, you know what, based upon my last pull, uh, I can get a 10-pound PR. I can get a 10-pound PR. There is no doubt in my mind. So I ramped up, uh, did the, four, the 575, which, you know, was reasonably heavy. I'm not going to say it felt light. But it went up nice and clean, no grinding. Realized that a 10-pound PR was something like a 6.5% increase over that. So I came over, uh, got tight, pulled everything, pulled it, locked it, held it, talked at the top, and then set it back down under control. Called that a clean PR. Uh, and a coach friend of mine, actually Russell, commented on it already. He's like, wow, man, that's with a stiff bar. Whippy's going to be easier. It's like, exactly. It's going to be the whole point. Whatever... Uh, I want to count as a real gym deadlift. It's going to be with my stiff bar with a hold at the top. The reason is, you know, you go to comp and you're allowed to use a whippier bar. It's going to be a cakewalk. Whippier bar and the ability to grind. So that's that's the idea. Um, now, I'm really happy with it. Like I said, I wasn't planning on doing it, but I realized I could do it. Because people ask me, Jason, when do you work in the classic lifts? When I know I can PR. It's like when I do a squat, I'm going to back squat when I know I can PR by 10 pounds. Until then, we max on variations, and people who follow my vlogs know my rotation. Uh, now, everything else was good today, too. Went ahead and went up 5 pounds on the hip thrust. This is the heaviest I've ever done hip thrust with at this point for any reps. So, 440, 5 sets of 10. What's the goal here? 500. All right? I've already said, when I can do 500 for 10 on this lift, I know I can squat 600. Assuming my upper back can handle the weight. That's why we do upper back work. But yeah, this was a PR. And honestly, my hamstrings and everything were feeling. I was a little worried when I got to my glute ham raises today. I was slightly worried because I'm like, man, my hamstrings are shot. They're shot. So I went over to loosen everything up. I finished up all of these. I uh, got my 5x10, and I need to do a tutorial on these. A lot of people have asked me to do one. They're like, I don't know where to set the bar. It's like, there's there's only one place you can set the bar. Like, if someone tries to tell you where to set the bar on something like this, they're lying to you. There There are no options. On a hip thrust, there is literally only one place you can set the bar, and if you don't set it there... It is going to slide when you get to the bottom of the rep, right? There, there's no options. I need to do a tutorial on that. You don't have three different places you can put it. If you offset it by one inch, it's going to hurt because it's going to roll into place. It's very easy. And if you're able to do anywhere else, you're using way too light of a weight. Doing way too light of a weight if you even have the ability to hold it in any place but the hip crease. So, over to the GHRs, though. I uh, did them with my mini band. Uh, I did four sets of 12. I haven't quite added a fifth set now that I'm doing 12s. I will. I almost felt like I could today, even though the fourth set was challenging, and I was surprised because my hamstrings were, were kind of lit. Deadlift PRs use a lot of hamstring. Um, those hip thrust PR by five pounds. A uh, fair amount of hamstring used there. Went over though because my low back was getting really fatigued. I did a couple sets on my, my reverse hyper in between before I did this. Tried to keep my head down a little more because I'm trying to make these as, as hamstring specific as possible because this is my, my big hamstring builder. And I've already said that's going to be one of my secrets moving forward with my squat and deadlift. I'm going to overdevelop my hamstrings. And low back, I'm not worried. I have a reverse hyper. I use that thing every day. Yes, I will eventually show it. The camera is actually touching it at this moment. Uh, but, very useful piece of equipment. Very, very useful. So, this allows me to free up real hamstring work like the glute ham race. 
I'm going to build beastly hamstrings because you know what? They're going to keep that deadlift moving. They're going to keep me more injury free. But the glute ham raise develops all three heads of the hamstring. Now the goal is to get to at least four sets of 12, five sets of 12 with this band. When I can comfortably do five sets of 12 and then maybe eke out one more rep, two more reps on the fifth set, I'll maybe go up to the next band. But you know what? As of right now, especially doing hip thrust first, this is about all my hamstrings can handle. And it's good. I'm getting really, really good hamstring activation here. Again, we are fully working all three heads. Again, I take my glasses off also because they were sliding off with me, keeping my head down more. So again, for people who don't understand this movement, this is a hamstring exercise. I'm not doing it for my low back. I'm not doing anything else. It's a hamstring movement. And we did our rows. And these were easy the first couple sets. I didn't have to regrip. And of course, I've moved up a micro plate. So for those curious what I have on the bar, it's only 152 and a half. With the axle bar row, this is enough to grow my back for sets of 15. So anyone who's saying, well, that's not enough weight. I can do whatever weight. It's like, well, how big is your back and how much do you deadlift? Maybe you're cheating on your rows. This has come up with some regular posters who said, yeah, he's right. I videoed myself rowing and I look like a flip fish flopping. I took 50 pounds off the bar. Now I do it right and I still feel my back. Because, guys, it's not just about how much weight you move it's how much weight the muscles you want to use are moving and if you go too heavy on a row what happens you don't get that isometric training in the posterior chain you beat up your recovery and you still don't get more back development because the back can only lift what the back can lift and by doing it strict like this you're forcing the lats to start the weight putting the lats in a stretch position and then they contract up at the top training our rear delts everything else of course i'm doing face pulls on my upper body days so we're going to overdevelop that area. I need that area overdeveloped. I need it for my benching, my overhead press. I need it for my squat stability. Because I am worried my upper back could become a limit in my squatting. I need all this upper back work. And we need a ton of volume. We need to put meat up there. I'll tell you guys right now, having an upper back that is well developed is never a disadvantage for strength. It will never make you weaker. And it will almost certainly make you stronger and it has aspects of it that carry over to all the big four. Squat, bench, deadlift, and overhead press. All right? So there, there is no reason to neglect your upper back. And so I tell guys, as much as I love pull-ups, pull-ups are great. You guys have seen me do a ton of pull-ups. They do not work the upper back as effectively. They work the, the lats just as effectively, if not better. But if you do enough rowing, your lats are going to be maximized anyways if you do enough volume but the row builds the upper back a lot better all right it helps with isometric strength through the posterior chain in this case with the axle bar this is one of my biggest grip components and notice my grip is not an issue i'm now holding 615 at the top and top be able to talk for a second and set it down the grip training is moving forward and this bar has a lot to do with it. It has been one of the keys to my, my success there. But guys, you don't have to go that heavy on rows. And it's not because weight doesn't matter. It's not that tension doesn't matter. It's that you're not really doing any more tension on the muscles if you're just flopping around. Okay? And you are beating up your recovery. And we get good isometric training and everything here. And besides, am I worried about trying to work my hamstrings dynamically on here? I just did glued ham raises. All right, today we did five sets of curls. Why? I need more bicep. Let's be honest here. My biceps, worst muscle, doesn't help my YouTube that I don't have bigger arms. And like I've said before, we've discussed this in the past, I'm able to actually feel my biceps again for the first time in a long time. So I'm going to, on all my up, my lower days after I row, because my biceps are already fatigued, I'm going to do curls with chains. I'm going to continue to do the band work most days off camera to help build the tendons, keep the blood flow going. But I do need some primary movers, and I need ones that are going to build both arms, because my left arm has tissue loss. I need it to be balanced. And by the way, it is just as strong. And I think that's something that people need to... Think about when it comes to things like tissue loss and compensation in the body. My left bicep, even though a chunk of it was cut out, removed by the doctor, I got to see it. It was about the size of my pinky finger. 
many, many years ago, it's equally strong. I'm equally strong on both, but I'm making sure I'm loading each equally to the best of my ability here. Uh, you know what? Five sets to basically failure or for around 15 plus rep range. That's a fair amount of volume after rowing. Now, some people say, well, you need more than that. It's like, it's after rowing, guys, and it's done every two days. It's over 15 to 20 sets a week. That's a lot. And I think for me, if as long as I'm consistent, it, the biceps will keep growing, especially because I'm rowing first. They're getting really pre-fatigued pre with a compound movement. It'll finish them off. Biceps will help my bench press. Again, we're making them more tear resistant on the deadlift in general. So I'll go ahead and do it. It's not a big deal. You know, but the thing is for me, I have to see multiple needs for it. I, I can't force myself consistently to do something I see as only aesthetic because I, I really struggle to care about aesthetics, even though my income could be affected by it. It's just so frivolous to me that it's hard for me. To, I can't use that for personal motivation. I won't do it if that's my motivation. So people need to remember that. I can't motivate myself to do something just to look pretty. I can't do it. I have to have other motivation. In this case, my bench press sucks. The biceps can contribute to my bench press. Okay, we've got some, some decent data on that as far as them being a, a very, very important dynamic stabilizer. All right? I need to make them more tear resistant on the deadlift. So I'm motivated to do it for that reason. Okay, now I can do that and combine it with looking better, especially when I cut later on again. All right, that's fine. I have to have multiple reasons. So that is a big part of my motivation, and it, it'll keep me motivated to do so. But happy with the workout, great PR. Uh, we are way, way on track. Everything is go going perfectly. Really happy with that PR today. So I hope it has been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.